What are you doing? Many times I have heard someone say I believe that imagining creates reality, but I once imagined something and it never came to pass. Then I ask what are you doing, saying I once imagined it and not imagining it now? For God's name is I am, not I did. Always thinking of God as someone outside of himself, man finds it difficult to keep the tense, but God is the human imagination and there is no other God. When you imagine you may include others, but do not think in terms of influence. Rather, think only in terms of clarity of form. Perhaps a friend would like a better job, more money, and greater responsibility. Before you imagine, take a moment and clarify the form your imaginal act will take. Are you giving the celebration party or is he, who will be there? Fill the room with those who would want to share in the celebration. Raise your glass and say here's to your fabulous new job, your salary increase, and the challenge of your greater responsibility. Don't think in terms of trying to influence the friend's boss, for he could die or be discharged. Just go to the end. Toast the event, and do not think of influencing others. The law, to be effective, needs feeling with form. Build a structure that would imply your desire is already fulfilled, and enter its form with feeling. You do not have to be concerned about influencing others, as they are not the cause, your imaginal act is. Those who have a billion dollars are not causing your world. You and you alone are doing it, as your imaginal acts influence people. Everyone is yourself pushed out, so when you imagine, you are influencing yourself. Knowing what you want, place your attention on its clarity of form, and then watch what you are imagining. Are you remembering when you imagined something greater than what you have? If so, you are confessing you are not now imagining your desire fulfilled. If imagining creates reality, you must change your memory and become aware of what you are imagining right now. Let me now tell you of a series of dreams I received from a friend. The series began one night when she found herself with a group of children, trying to find something that was lost. Seeing a brown paper bag tied with string, she opened it and removed a watch, as one of the children said that is a treasure, and the dream ended. The next night she found herself moving as if on wheels, with everything she sees moving with her. Then she said to herself this is not what I want. Everything is moving, while I still have the sense of longing, and she awoke. The following night, she felt herself walking with an enormous crowd across fields, on roads and sidewalks. She went up hills and down stairs, attending my lectures in many places. Listening attentively, she was thrilled to hear the revelations which were being shared. Entering a beautiful, old, ivy-covered building, she tried to mentally remember every word I said, but when she awoke on her bed, their memory was gone. The next night she entered an expansive White House, which she knew her father had built. All of the rooms were empty, except the one in which I was teaching and the adjacent room where her father was. Don't forget this aspect of the dream, as the father is unseen. Addressing all of my remarks to her, she is filled with joy. Then, with profound authority I announced my name is Friday. Recognizing its tremendous significance, she said yes. And that means, oh my darling. I smiled, nodded, and she awoke. My friend heard and saw correctly, for my name is Friday, as I am the god of love. In mythology which is only part vision love is a goddess. But in vision, love is man. Having been incorporated into the body of the risen Lord, I am the embodiment of love, I am one with that one body, one spirit, one Lord, one God and Father of all. The word Yakid is used only ten or twelve times in scripture. It is defined as my darling, my only son. Anyone who is incorporated into the body of love is Yakid, and called my darling. The word first appears in the 22nd chapter of Genesis, when the Lord, speaking of the promised child, says to Abraham you did not withhold your only son Yakid, then, in the Gospel of John, when the crucifixion and resurrection had taken place, this passage from Zechariah is quoted they shall look upon him whom they have pierced, and mourn for him as one mourns for an only child Yakid. 
John 19 Zechariah 12 I have experienced scripture. I now tell its truth to those who will listen. Those who believe my words will encounter me as I teach night after night. My friend could not recall the words I spoke, but she did remember my name, for my name is Friday, as I am the God of love. The first definition given to the word Yakid is unity, soul in the sense of being unique, the only one. Everyone incorporated into that one body is unique and the only one, for there is only one body, only one spirit, only one Lord, only one God and Father of us all. In that body there is a unity, yet an individuality, and when you wear it you are Friday, the God of love. On this level no one sees that body, but she saw it in the spirit and brought the memory of the experience back with her. In the ivy covered walls I instructed others, but in the White House there was only one door to the room occupied by her unseen father and where I spoke to her alone. Do you see the symbolism? Now a dream is egocentric, with every aspect of it taking place in the individual. Although the dream unfolds in one, that one contains all. In her dream the father is unseen, but projects himself into the teacher, who tells her that her father is the God of love. Returning to this level, the first words given us by the one who comes to reveal this truth, that imagining creates reality, are repent and believe in the gospel. Repentance, which is a radical change of attitude, can cause your powerful imagination to burst through this world of death. So I ask you to repent to test this wonderful law by changing your attitude towards life and watch what happens. A gentleman recently dreamed he was peeling his head, bringing the skin down to his neck then pulling it back again. As he did, he realized that he was generating light from the inside and knew that the outside was completely dark. This gentleman saw the truth. Blake said it so beautifully all that you behold, though it appears without it is within in your imagination of which this world of mortality is but a shadow. Now he knows that the outer world is being lit by the light of awareness which comes from within. While listening to a tape lecture of mine, this gentleman fell asleep and was awakened by two terrific blows on the right side of his head and saw the index finger of the right hand extended. Having peeled his head, he has removed the outer skin of Esau. Knowing he must continue to wear it while here, this gentleman will put it back on, but now he knows the world is made alive from within, and that in itself is quite a blow. This man has been coming to hear me for only a short time. He has appeared at the eleventh hour and is receiving the same fruit as those who came at the first hour. Everyone receives the same message and the same blows, as they are essential to the awakening of the sleeping one within all, in his wonderful hymn, Isaac Watts says wrapped within the silence of the tomb the great Redeemer sleeps. Hail and death combined their force to hold our Lord, but the great conqueror arose and broke the fragile chain. Your heavenly Father sleeps within you as your own wonderful human imagination. One day he will break the chain and you will rise as he. But in the meantime, put him to the test, and you will discover that neither hail nor death combining their force will keep your desires from being fulfilled. Now, there is an eternal brotherhood and fatherhood, for every individual is the father of the same child. How would I ever know that you and I are one were it not for this symbol? God placed eternity his only son, David in the mind that man may know he is his father. And if you know David to be your son, and I know I am his father, are we not one? There is no other way of proving our brotherhood, save through our common fatherhood. If you had a son and I had another, we could question this common fatherhood, but there is only one son, who is loved by all. We are all one, but we will know it only as we are gathered into that one body, one spirit, one Lord, one God and Father of all. Always think in clarity of form, for as you do, you are influencing others. When I wanted to get out of Barbados, I didn't think of influencing anyone. I simply used clarity of form and walked up the gangplank in my imagination. That act caused someone 5,000 miles away to cancel their passage. And although there were hundreds ahead of me waiting for passage, the one who had the power to distribute the tickets chose us, so I did influence others.
I imagined, and we came back, while thousands who preceded us in applying for passage continued to wait their turn. Do you know that the moment you draw a line you encompass energy? That without an outline, everything is nothing? Draw your outline and make your picture as clear as possible. Perhaps you are giving a party to honor one who is present. Sit at the table with friends and raise your glass. Congratulate your friend on his new position, his greater salary and more responsibility. Stick to that thought, and it will not matter to you who is influenced. The moment you think of influence, you reduce a miracle to magic. All the people in the world are only yourself pushed out. No one has the power to hold you back or promote you, for you are self promoted or self-restricted. Blake tells us to enter into, not just observe, but enter into, images in our imagination. To approach them on the fiery chariot of contemplative thought. To make a friend and companion of any one of these images of wonder, for if we will, we will rise from the grave and meet the Lord in the air and be happy. Let us say you are in Los Angeles and want to be in New York City. You could enter the city on the fiery chariot of your contemplative thought by thinking from it, and no longer thinking from Los Angeles. You enter New York City by rising from your grave of flesh and blood in Los Angeles and meeting your Lord your I am in the air. Do that and you will be happy in the doing, for that is how reality is created. When you enter the state you desire to express and believe it is true, no earthly power can stop it from objectifying itself. And although you do not deliberately influence others, you influence everyone. As Sir James Fraser, said a man on this planet cannot raise a hand without influencing the farthest star in the heavens in its unified form, practice the art of imagining, and you will discover you can go anywhere and enter any time without the aid of anyone. Move in your imagination, and people will respond because of your action. Dare to assume you are wealthy, and watch everyone play their parts to provide you with the wealth you claim to have. They will, for they are only yourself pushed out. The world goes on and on, as the actors, playing their numberless parts, desire more and more things that vanish. Man is forever fighting for something that passes away. Yet he is told do not lay up treasures on earth where thieves can take and the moth corrupt, but lay up treasures in heaven where no man can take from you. The treasures of earth can be withdrawn at any moment, but the treasures in the instructions I am giving you now are forever. Only one being was pierced, and that is Jesus Christ, your true identity. The crucifixion is over. You have been crucified with Christ, and your resurrection will take place in you in its own wonderful time, I ask you to test your imagination. Go all out and believe in what you have imagined. Do not try to influence anyone. Instead, put all of your energies into clarity of form. If a certain desk designates that you are occupying a desired position, occupy that desk. Enter into the image, and you will realize your vision. Sit in the chair behind that desk and view the room. Persist in thinking from that point of view. If you do not physically occupy the chair tomorrow, and begin to doubt, ask yourself what am I doing, remembering and not imagining? Then return to your chair behind the desk. Now let us go into the silence.